Well, happy Easter, everyone, and welcome to our live church online Easter service right here at Community Church. Church, thank you so much for sharing some of those family Easter traditions. They were so great, weren't they, Beck? So good. So yeah. fun to see all your traditions, all the fun things you guys do as a family. And welcome into our home. You know, for 17 years, we've been coming to you, but now, uh, or you've been coming to us, but now we want to come to you right from our home. And uh, man, we're getting ready for Easter. Mm -hmm. I've got a ham in the oven. Let Killing me tell you, it smells so good. it's going to be hard for this preacher today to preach with the smell of, you know, baked ham in the house. And I hope you're all getting ready uh, to celebrate uh, Easter. You know, it's interesting interesting that this Easter, while we all cannot gather together under the same roof, we are able to gather together under the same name, the name above all names, uh, the name of Jesus. Yeah, and I'm back. This is my husband, Dave, and uh, we're just so excited to spend Easter with you. It's our little dog, Holly. She loves to hang out with us when yeah. we're uh, filming here. If, so. she, if she falls asleep. Yeah. Or starts snoring. Or start, yeah. I, yeah. I, my preaching usually has that effect on people, so you're in good company. <laughs> we apologize. <laughs> but we just, uh, there's nobody else that we would want to spend Easter yeah. with than all of you guys right here, right now. We love you more than we can say. It's an honor to be able to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ with you. We also want you to know uh, we have been praying for you and thinking about you. We miss you all so much. And even though this Easter, uh, we, our, our whole you know, Easter has been, you know, just changed up because of the circumstances of this virus and the shutdown and all quarantined in our, mm -hmm. in our homes together. And, and all, while all of our Easter plans have changed, you know, uh, we typically go out, buy new Easter outfits mm -hmm. and take pictures with the kids. We can't do that. Mm -hmm. Or we usually uh, have a big, you know, family gathering and have a nice meal. We can't do that. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's so strange and odd for us to not even be able to, you know, yeah. meet together in person uh, for church this Easter. But here's what we believe. We believe that this year, Easter has come at exactly the right time. Mm -hmm. You know, even with the fact that um, all of the traditional uh, trappings of Easter have been stripped away, we have a wonderful opportunity this Easter to just kind of slow down and hit the pause button and focus on what really matters most. Mm -hmm. And that's family and that's faith. And so this Easter, um, I'm just going to encourage you to just lean in, uh, maybe just quiet all the other noise, maybe in the house if you can, <laughs> as you gather all the kids together, whoever's in your home to watch. And let's just lean in and, and, and focus on uh, what matters most at Easter. And it's the fact that we serve a risen Savior, that he conquered death, hell, and the grave, and that we can live together in victory. If we do that right now over these next few minutes, I believe this will be the most meaningful and memorable Easter ever. So today is going to be a special at-home Easter celebration. First, we're going to have some worship and worship as a family, celebrate Jesus' resurrection. And then we're going to jump into our Easter Jam celebration for the entire it's going family. It's so much fun. There's fun games. There's this really cool illustrated story. You guys are not going to want to miss it. Yes. Easter Jam is for everyone. It does not matter your age. You will enjoy it. I promise. So stick around for all of that. But before we get into all of it, um, I want you to know you are not here by accident. We've been praying for you and we believe that this is a very important day in your life and in your journey towards God. The truth is um, that we all come from different backgrounds, right? That's you know, right. we all have differences, different lives, uh, different views on politics, different views on religion. You know, it's true. So I would say this to all of you out there. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens <laughs> out there. Uh, that's a Tiger King reference, if you get it. Um, but, you know, we all do come from different backgrounds mm -hmm. and different uh, walks of life. And maybe today uh, you believe in God. Mm -hmm. Or maybe some of you just aren't sure yet. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe today you're part of the Democratic Party. Maybe you're part of the Republican Party. <laughs> or maybe you just like to party. <laughs> but whoever you are, wherever you're watching from, uh, however you got here, we believe that God has brought you here on purpose. This is not an accident. I believe that God has something to say to you uh, today. And we uh, have been praying for you, mm -hmm. and we're so glad that you're joining us. 
So we're just so glad, like Dave said, that you're here. And if you're new around here, maybe it's your first, second, third, or fourth time, we would love to connect with you. We'd love to get to know you. In fact, we would call you a VIP. You are a very important person. So here's what you can do. Grab your phone, text me and Dave, text your first name to 570-580-4340. And we'd love to get to know you, hear your story, and just connect with you. Yeah, we really wanna hear from you. So go ahead and just shoot us a text. <clears throat> I promise we won't bite and we won't like bombard you with a million texts. We just want to know who you are and and be able to uh, uh, just connect with you today. Also, uh, we have a, a team that's hosting this service live right now from all over Monroe County. And so uh, as you're watching today, we want to engage with you and we want to answer any questions you have. We want to pray for you. So listen, if you're on Facebook right now or you're on YouTube, hey, we're glad you're here. Hey, just log off there and just join us over at mycommunity.church slash watch. Mm -hmm. We've got a great brand new smoking fast um, uh, church online platform, lots of fun ways and tools that you can engage in and connect with us today. And by the way, we want to know, you know, where you're watching from. We actually had somebody watching from Japan in yes. our last service. I think so it was uh, uh, one of our uh, military uh, families. And so we want to know, where are you right now? And, and who's watching with you? Just snap some pictures and make sure that you post them on social media and tag us at my community church. So good. And this is also a great time to share this live experience with your family and friends. Today is going to be full of hope. And if there's anything our world needs right now, it is hope. So invite, tag, share this live experience with your friends. So here's what we're going to do today. In just a moment, we're going to have some worship with our worship leader, Mark. And then we're going to come back and we're going to pick up part four of our message series, Uphill. So today in our Uphill series, we come to the empty tomb, a place of victory. But before we jump into part four of our Uphill series, uh, we want to give you an opportunity to practice generosity. Church, we want to thank you so much for being so incredibly generous during this time. And we want to be sensitive uh, to those that are hurting financially, so there's no pressure. But we want to encourage you to continue to live your life with an open hand and trusting God with your finances. So important. The Bible says this about this, the world of the generous gets larger and larger, and the one who blesses others will be blessed by God. So if you're a part of our church family, or maybe you're somewhere else in the country, but you've been enjoying the ministry through church online, we want to encourage you, you can be generous today. So giving couldn't be easier here at Community Church. You can grab your phone and you can actually give via text. You can give any amount. All you got to do is text it to 84321. Well, so, yep. Let's pray together. Yeah, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you on uh, this Easter, uh, Lord, for the fact that um, you rose in victory and that victory is made available to us all. We thank you, Lord, for our church family. We invite the presence of your Holy Spirit to be among us wherever we are. We thank you that we can uh, gather like this together. Thank you, God, for the generosity of your people. I pray that you would bless them, bless the work of their hands. Lord, that you would continue to provide for all of their needs. We love you. Speak to us now through your word and through this worship. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
boutique with the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good Yes you do You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take You take what the enemy meant for evil Turn it for good. You turn it for good. Yeah. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. So I want to begin by asking you a question. Have you ever celebrated a major victory in your life? Maybe when you were a kid, you were on a sports team and you guys won the championship game. Or maybe you follow one of your favorite teams and they won a Super Bowl or some other championship game. Or maybe it was uh, when you got a good report from the doctor and you were able to beat that illness and you were free from that sickness. Or maybe it was when uh, you got accepted into you know, the, the college that you just dreamed of. <clears throat> or maybe you landed the dream job of your life. Or maybe it was when you were able to kick some addiction and beat the bottle and, and, and live a life free uh, and in sobriety. You know, I remember for Becca and I, uh, one of our greatest victories together as a couple, as, uh, you know, 17 years ago, we uh, were wanting to start a family mm -hmm. and we were having difficulty conceiving. And, and so we both went to the doctor, had a bunch of tests done and, and um, Becca had some real uh, serious complications, required some surgeries. And after all the different things that we did and the doc finally said, I just don't think it's gonna be possible for you guys to have kids. Well. God had other plans and uh, we were able to uh, conceive and I remember the day our first child, our only daughter, uh, my favorite daughter, uh, Kate was born and hugging Becca's neck and, mm -hmm. and she was like, Dave, this is the greatest victory of my life. Mm, so true, so good. And today we're coming together to celebrate a victory that million of people, millions of people have been celebrating, not only every year, but every week for 2000 years, the resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth. 
And this weekend, you know, we're in our homes, but we still have a lot to celebrate. In fact, we just have so much to celebrate in this difficult time as Jesus is alive and he is with us right now. He is bigger than everything that we are going through. And you know, on Friday, we remembered the sacrifice that Jesus mm. made. He died on the cross for our sins and Friday felt um, hopeless because mm. Jesus was dead. Mm. But then Easter, Jesus rose again. And Friday, we thought all hope was gone, but Sunday, Jesus rose in victory. You know, uh, speaking of victory, I, I had a friend many years ago, he actually won the, the lottery wow. and he won a million dollars. Crazy wow. to think of. What would you do if you won a million dollars? Think about that, a million dollars. Go ahead and just post uh, in the comments section below. What would you do with all of those winnings? I think here's what most people do. Uh, number one, uh, they pay off all their debts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the second thing they do is they buy something new. Mm. And I think what all of us want financially, we all, if we're honest with one another, I think we want the same thing spiritually. Mm. We want all our debts paid off mm -hmm. and we want something new. We want a new identity. We want to be made brand new. I want to anchor our thoughts today just in one scripture verse. And it's one of my favorites, one of our favorites in all the Bible. It's in 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. The greatest victory that we can share with you today is what happened 2,000 years ago. Yes, Jesus died on the cross and they laid him in the tomb. But three days later, he rose in victory and conquered death, hell, and the grave. And that victory that Jesus won, he didn't just win it for himself. He won it for all of us. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. He rose in victory mm -hmm. to cancel all of our debts, the moral debts that we have with the God of the universe. He rose in victory mm -hmm. to also make all things brand new. So I have a question for you. What do you see when you look in the mirror you know, with the coronavirus happening and we're all quarantined, uh, at this point, we are seriously needing some haircuts, right, yes. guys? And um, come on, ladies, how many of you are needing some root color about now, right? So we look in the mirror, we're seeing a little bit more gray and maybe, or you're feeling a little shaggy these days. Yeah. I know you guys are missing your barbers with the nice fades and the tight lines, right? Um, so let me ask you, uh, do you like what you see when you look in the mirror? When you look in the mirror, what is the story that it tells you? Yeah, I heard the story of a guy that was looking in the mirror, kind of an older guy, and his wife was in the bathroom with him, and he says, honey, look at me. Uh, I'm old, and I'm fat, and I'm ugly. And she just stood there in silence. And he's like, honey, I could really use some encouragement here. So she says, well, at least your eyesight is working really well. <laughs> you know, I don't know if humor translates online or not. <laughs> But you know, the truth is when many of us look in the mirror, we're oftentimes reminded of what we don't like mm -hmm. about ourselves. We think about our past and the mistakes that we've made, the messiness of our life, the way that we've <clears throat> failed, the bad choices that we've made. And, and, and we let oftentimes our past define who we are. You see, the reality is when we do make mistakes and we do live in sin, it breaks our body down. Mm -hmm. And sin, has side effects. This is true. Mm -hmm. Sin has side effects. Now, hey, don't get me wrong. You know, sin is fun. <laughs> I bet you never heard a preacher say that before. But you know, sin is fun. I mean, if you're not having fun while you're sinning, you're, you're probably doing it wrong. Uh, you know, even the Bible says sin is fun for a season. And, and, and sin it, it, it has side effects. It carries with it consequences. Some of you might be saying, well, I'm sinning now. Nothing's wrong with me. Well, just give it some time, friend. Uh, for those of us that know from the school of hard knocks mm -hmm. that sin always carries consequences. And one of the cons is when we look at our past and we let it define us. You know, we look at the mistakes that we've made, the people we've hurt, or we think about the people who have hurt us. And, and it makes us feel bad about ourselves. We feel inadequate from it, or we feel stupid or ugly, and we feel like a failure. And all we see when we look in the mirror is someone we believe that can't change. But listen to me, Jesus changes 
everything. The Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. You see, when you come to faith in Christ, he gives you an entirely new identity. Your past is your past. Jesus sets you free. He makes all things new. You are more than your mistakes. And when you are in Christ, your sin debts are paid and he makes you into something brand new. So don't let the sins of your past define you. Mm. Let the savior of your present define you. That's right. Don't let your past mistakes and your bad history define you and determine the direction and destiny of your life. No, let, let his story, the story of Jesus, let that define you and determine your destiny in your life. You see, I see so many people oftentimes trying to overcompensate from the mistakes of their past and they try to do all these good things to somehow outweigh the bad things in their life. And, you know, so they, you know, volunteer in the community. They do nice things for their kids and their family. They might even help the poor, give some money to a, a nonprofit organization. They help little old ladies across the street. No offense to the little old ladies. Um, but we do all these things in hopes that somehow, you know, the good things that we do in our life will outweigh the bad things. And if I've done a lot of bad things, I got to do a lot more good things and I got to be good and, and gooder than my bad things so that somehow we cross our fingers and, and we hope and we wish that God somehow grades us on this cosmic curve and that, you know, if I just do enough good things in my life, they'll, they'll outweigh the, the bad things in my life and the cosmic scales will tip in my favor and somehow I'll just make it into heaven. So the only problem with that is this verse in the Bible that says in Isaiah 64, 6, all of us become like one who is unclean and all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. In other words, even on our best day, we could never be good enough to earn God's love. We could never do enough righteous acts to twist God's arm to forgive us. Mm. Our righteous acts, the Bible says, it's like filthy rags. And you know, it doesn't say that our unrighteous acts are mm. like filthy rags. It says our righteous acts. You know, going to Bible studies, mm -hmm. going to church, serving the poor, giving your money away, doing kind things for other people. You know, I don't care if you read your Bible every day, if you go to church three times a week, if you're depending on these righteous acts to help you earn your salvation, you're making a huge mistake. So what's the solution? Well, go back with me to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says this, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, not like in church, not involved as a volunteer, not uh, in the Bible, not in you know prayer. No, if anyone therefore is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. You see, the love and the forgiveness of God is not something that you achieve in life. It's something that you receive in life. It's not based on something that you do. It's based on something that's already been done for you when Jesus went to the cross for you and for me. It says this in Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates his love for the, us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Even before we made the decision to love him back, God says, no, I'm gonna take the first step and I'm going to send my one and only son that he will die for you on the cross, that he will take care of your uh, you know, moral debts and he'll pay the tab. He'll pick up the check by giving his life and his blood and through that redemption uh, is possible for the forgiveness of our sins. You see, Christ, he, he went to the cross for you to give his life for you because the reality is sin does have side effects. That's why the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. That's the side effect, the ultimate side effect. Uh, that's why the Bible says that uh, you know, somebody had to pay the price, they had to give their life, but not just anybody, a perfect someone, because it takes perfection to cancel out imperfection. And when God looked for a perfect one on earth, he couldn't find one. So you know what God did? He became one of us. He humbled himself and took on the very form of a man. And that man's name was Jesus. And Jesus lived a perfect, sinless life life. He was the innocent one. And he went to the cross and he gave his life. He gave his body. He gave his blood for the redemption of, this, of our sins because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 
That's why he went and did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. He paid the debt he didn't even owe because we owed a debt that we couldn't even pay. And Jesus went to the cross and he died a humiliating and painful death. You see the cross, it is not a decoration. It is a declaration, mm. a declaration of God's love for you and for me. You see, he did for us what we could not do for ourselves. And he declared sin's debts have been paid mm. um, so that we could be made brand new. And, you know, he t it, they took him off the cross. They put his body in a borrowed grave because he wasn't going to be there for very long. And on that third day, he rose from the grave. And that was the day that death died. And that's why it says here in 1 Corinthians 15, 55 to 57, Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is in the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the empty tomb is a place of victory because Jesus rose from the grave. He has the power to turn tragedy into triumph. He has the power to make you brand new. He makes you a new creation when you're feeling hopeless. He makes you a new creation when you're feeling depressed. He makes you a new creation when you uh, feel like others are giving up on you. He makes you a new creation when you want to give up on yourself. He, give, he makes you a new creation when your marriage is falling apart. He makes you a new creation when you're battling addiction. He makes you a new creation when your, your, your health is fading. He makes you a new creation even when, you're, when your strength is waning. Yeah. See, that's why Jesus came. He came to make everything brand new. So here's my question for you. When has that ever happened for you? Can you think of a time? Can you think of a time in your life when you received Christ? When uh, a time in your life when you've got um, uh, an opportunity to uh, give your heart and your life to Christ, to receive in return uh, his new life to make you brand new? You see, here's the deal with salvation. It's not something we achieve, it's something we receive. That's why John says this in his gospel in John chapter 1, verse 12. Yet to all who received him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. You see, you get to become a child of God when, you're, when your sin debt is paid for. You get to be made brand new when you receive Christ into your life. So I'm asking you right now, are you in Christ today? Have you received his love? his grace, and his forgiveness into your life. If you haven't, uh, we would be honored uh, to pray for you to receive Christ. Would you pray with us? Heavenly Father, I thank you right now, Lord, that you are moving right now through this broadcast, that people all over the Poconos and, and even beyond are coming to faith in right now in you. And I pray, God, right now is that you would give them the courage that we, you would give us all the, the humility that we need to humble ourselves and recognize you as our Lord and Savior and just simply to receive what you've done for us on the cross 2,000 years ago. And if that's you today, as, as you're praying to receive Christ, maybe your prayer could go something like this. You could say, Heavenly Father, I put my faith and my trust in you today. I believe Jesus lived and he died and he rose again and I receive him into my heart. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. It's in your name I pray. Amen. 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 If you just prayed that prayer, let me be the first to welcome you to the family. Yeah. Welcome home. And we would love to connect with you and help you take your next spiritual step. So all you got to do is text your name to me and Dave to 570-795-9449. We would love to celebrate with you. Well, listen, we're going to continue uh, with our service right now and just a, actually just a moment as we go into our Easter jam celebration. It's a fun at home Easter party for the entire family. And listen, it's gonna, you especially wanna uh, stick around to the very end. It's one of the most creative and illustrative um, 
messages of the gospel that you will ever see in your life. So, but before we do that, uh, we wanna just give you an opportunity um, one last time to practice generosity. Maybe you joined the broadcast a little bit late and we wanna go ahead and do that. Yeah, so as we prepare to give, I wanna tell you an amazing story that happened this week. We received two significant gifts and one of them, I have the envelope right here, it came in the mail. So this is an envelope that we used to use for offering years ago. Our, lo our, I know, our I, old logo and I, everything. I, I know, and it's it has crazy. our old PO box address on it, which we don't even have anymore. And our postmaster knows us so well, he dropped it off here at the house. And we opened it up and it didn't have a name or address, but it had a $5 bill inside. And you know, we got to thinking it was probably an elderly couple that's been with us for a long time, saved the envelope from years ago and uh, decided to give a generous gift. And you know, they're probably living on a fixed, a, income. A fixed income and and this was a very generous gift. Mm. We know this was a sacrifice for them and it just touched us so much when we received that this week for the church to be able to help more people that are in need. And, and then we also uh, received another gift. There's a lady in our church. She has her own business and typically when it comes to tax return time she just breaks even she doesn't receive anything or owe anything but for some reason she received a very large tax return this year yeah. and she decided to give us a large portion of that yeah. tax return she gave five thousand dollars to the church and you know what's so powerful about both of those gifts yeah. is that they are both equal sacrifices yeah. I mean both incredibly generous you see it is not about the amount that you give. It's about the attitude of the heart. That's mm. why the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. And it's just when we live our life with an open hand and we're able and, and willing to be generous with what we have, that's what matters. So as we give, you know, please remember, you don't only give to Community Church, you give through Community Church. We've already been able to help so many people in need. And as you are giving generously, uh, more needs are continually coming in and we're able to help more people. So thank you for being generous. And if you have a heart to give, you want to give above and beyond, uh, the best way to do that is to give online so we can keep mm. meeting those needs. Thank you for your sacrifice. Also, um, if you give here at Community Church, but you have not transitioned to uh, the online recurring giving, um, I want to encourage you to do that so you can continue to uh, continue to be faithfully generous. Mm. And, um, you know, the best way to give here at Community Church is to join the online Online giving team and set up a recurring gift and we have a quick video here to show you how to do that it's super easy fast and safe to set up a recurring gift online just log on to mycommunity.church click on the gift tab on the top right corner then click on the give online button type in any amount for recurring gifts select regularly then choose the day and date you'd like to give your gift. Finally, just enter your contact information and payment method, and that's it. After giving, you will receive an email confirmation. Thank you so much for your generosity and for investing in more change lives. Hey, we also wanted to remind you that next week we're kicking off a brand new teaching series that we're calling God mm -hmm. Is. We're gonna get a fresh perspective on who God is by studying some of the names the Bible uses to describe the nature and the character of God. I think it's gonna help you. Mm -hmm. And so make sure you come back next Sunday, 9, 30, and 11, right here live on Church Online. Well now, listen, we're gonna to go to our Easter Jam experience. We love you guys so much. Uh, God loves you, and now mm -hmm. enjoy Enjoy this Easter Jam experience with your whole family. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Hello, everyone, and happy Easter. I'm Trey, and I am so pumped for what's about to happen. Now, before we get started, there's only one thing you need to know. Easter Jam is for everybody in your family. So if you're a teenager, this is for you. College students, you too. And if you're a younger kid, get ready. We're about to have some serious fun, and we need you to lead the way. Adults, buckle up. This is Easter like you've never done it before. No matter who you are, 
we want you to know that Easter Jam is for you. The only way to not have fun is to not participate. We're getting started in three, two, one. Easter, a time for fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies. And then there are the weird parts of Easter, like fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies, which is interesting. But what does all this stuff have to do with Easter? And if this holiday is about more than candy and wearing uncomfortable clothes to church and lunch with your relatives, what makes Easter happy? Okay, hear me out. There are only two kinds of people in the world. People who love these things and people like me. I just don't get it. How do you eat something that is this cute and grainy? Now let's see how your family feels. Show me a thumbs up if you love to eat these things and a thumbs down if you don't. Okay, okay. There are a lot of different opinions out there. But no matter how you feel about eating peeps, you're gonna love this game. Your family is going to face off in the greatest peeps jousting competition of all time. I'm gonna explain how it works and then I'll tell you when to start. First, divide the room into two teams. Next, take two peeps and assign them to a team. Now, if you don't have any peeps, no worries at all. Big marshmallows like this one will work just as well. Now, team A gets peep A, team B gets peep B. You can come up with cooler names like Lord Sugarcoat or Sir Sprinkles, you get the idea. You can also use a marker or a Sharpie to decorate your peeps to give them some personality. Maybe you can draw a mustache on your peep or give them some mean eyebrows or a fancy outfit. Just let your creative juices flow. Next, you need to prepare your peeps for battle. Take a toothpick and stick it into the front of each peep, just like that. Now you can think of the toothpick as a joust or a lightsaber or a sword. It just depends on how serious your family is about the competition. Make sure the toothpick is facing forward and toward the other peep. Now you're gonna place the two combatants on a microwave plate. No social distancing is necessary. You want the peeps to be as close together and facing one another. And finally, time for the big event. Gather around and put the plate in the microwave, setting the timer to 45 seconds. You won't let it run that long. In fact, don't let it run that long. Then press start. Watch at a safe distance until the peeps drop their toothpick sabers and one touches the other. The toothpick that touches the other peep first, that peep wins. Now, as soon as this happens, you're gonna wanna stop the microwave. Trust me on this one. Stop the microwave. Okay, it's time to settle this thing. And don't forget to snap a pic of that photo finish. It's go time. How did it go? Who won? I want pictures. You can post them with the hashtag Easter Jam 2020. Now, <laughs> I have to admit, this was a lot more fun than I thought. And also, this happened. Jeez. All right, you ready for another game? For this one, you need a laundry basket and socks. Lots of socks. Clean or dirty, doesn't matter. As long as they have a match. Now, if you need to, go grab those things now. I'm gonna go wash my hands, and then I'll explain the rest. Got your basket and socks? Great. Now, choose two people to play. You'll also need two people to be scorekeepers. And to get started, dump all the socks on one side of the room. Don't worry, those socks will make their way back to the basket real soon. Then, place the basket on the other side. 
And when I say go, players will grab a sock, go through the pile, and find the matching one. You'll roll the socks together in the shape of a ball, or like an Easter egg, and then toss them, just like that, across the room into the laundry or Easter basket. Now the player with the most socks or eggs in the basket at the end of the timer wins. If you don't have scorekeepers to help you count, you have to keep up with that number on your own. So that means everybody's on the honor system, all right? Parents, I'm looking at you. Okay, now if you need to, get everything and everyone in position for the game. I'll wait here. Everybody ready? Great. We're putting a countdown timer on the screen right now, and this Easter egg throwdown is happening in three, two, one, go. All right, families, come back over here. Come on back. Who won? Okay, that, that was wild. And whoever won gets socks. Okay, just kidding. But adults, make sure whoever won the challenge gets a special treat today. Now, I hope you're having fun so far. We're celebrating because today is Easter. And if you don't know the whole story of Easter, that's okay. Today, we'll talk about what makes today, maybe more than any other day, a happy day. But before we get there, I know you have a lot of family and friends who would love to hear from you. And to make that happen, you have a few options. Pick one of the challenges on the screen to wish your peeps a happy Easter. Okay, so I just got like nine texts from my crew saying happy Easter. Thanks fam, real nice. Now even though we're celebrating a little differently than we have in past years, that's okay. Easter is still happy. And that's not just because of peep wars or Easter baskets or chocolate bunnies, although those things are awesome. It's still happy because of what happened thousands of years ago at the first Easter. It's the world's most powerful story and yet it's so simple. So simple that it can be told with laundry. In the beginning, God created everything. He formed people in his very own image. But then we turned away from God. Sin entered the world like a dark stain. Still, God loved us so deeply that he made a plan to rescue us at just the right moment. God sent his very own son, Jesus, to live among us. Jesus healed hearts and minds and bodies. Thousands gathered to hear him teach. Instead of giving lots of new rules, Jesus turned things upside down by making it simple. Love God, love others. After three years of traveling and teaching, Jesus and his disciples entered Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast. Huge crowds gathered to welcome him. But while the crowds cheered for Jesus, the religious leaders made plans to arrest him. He was turning their world upside down, and they wanted him gone. As Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his friends, he told them that he would be leaving. 
but would return. His friends didn't understand. That night, one of Jesus' followers, Judas, led soldiers to arrest him. The religious leaders gave Jesus a fake trial and then sent him to Pilate, the Roman governor, who could have him killed. Pilate found Jesus had broken no law and tried to release him. But a mob called for Jesus to be killed. Pilate gave in and handed Jesus over to the Roman soldiers. Jesus was forced to carry the heavy beams of his own wooden cross. On a hill called Golgotha, the soldiers nailed Jesus' hands and feet to the rough wood. The soldiers and people who passed by laughed and mocked him. But from the cross, Jesus asked God to forgive them. Finally, Jesus called out, it is finished. Then he died. The earth shook. Rocks split open. Even the soldiers cried, surely he was the son of God. One of Jesus' followers took his body and placed it in a tomb cut from the rock. A huge stone blocked the entrance. Jesus' friends were devastated. They had believed that Jesus was the one God promised, the one who would rescue them. But now he was gone. Their whole world had turned upside down. Jesus' friends stayed hidden in fear for three days. But early Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene, a close friend of Jesus, hurried to the tomb. She planned to anoint Jesus' body with special spices. As Mary neared the tomb, she saw the stone had been rolled away. The tomb was empty. Mary turned to see a man standing near. She didn't recognize him until he said, Mary, it was Jesus, alive. Jesus told her, do not hold on to me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Jesus, God's Son, became like us to lay down his life. Through God's power, he defeated death for all of us, and sin was washed away. One day, he's promised to return so we can live with him forever. I hear that story every Easter and it always amazes me. I mean, God sent Jesus to the world to remind me that he is greater than anything that can go wrong in my world. The simple fact that Jesus came back to life is proof to me that I can face anything bad that happens. I like to think about it this way. I can because Jesus is alive. I can keep loving because Jesus is alive. I can be brave because Jesus is alive. I can have hope because Jesus is alive. Here's an idea. Take a few minutes and add to this list of things you can do because Jesus is alive. Answer this question as a family. How would you fill in the blank? I can because Jesus is alive.
awesome. I love conversations like these because remembering what God has done in the past helps me to trust him with what's going on in my life right now. And I hope that's true for you too. And I hope you spend the rest of the day making happy memories with your family. To get you started, here's one last challenge. Now for this one, you'll need to decide who is the technology genius at your house. Maybe it's a step parent or an aunt or maybe an eighth grader. Either way, decide who that person is now. Got it? Awesome. Now as soon as this video is over, I want you to go outside and take a family Easter photo. You can be dressed up or you can be in your PJs. It can be totally normal with smiling faces or silly with one of those filters that turns your face into a bunny rabbit. No matter how you do it, take a family photo and make it awesome. Then share it to social media. Remember to use the hashtag EasterJam2020 so we can see your family's Easter style. Maybe now more than ever, this is a time to celebrate and remember God's faithfulness and the hope he gives us in Jesus. After all, that's what makes Easter so happy. Shame. 